In the many hours that I've been playing RimWorld, probably the most common question that I've gotten from new players is what I look for when I'm selecting my starting colonists. So I thought I'd make a video that was an overview of the things that I look for in characters, as the first in a series of beginner videos that cover basic concepts in RimWorld, either for new players or players who are looking to return to the game after a little while. When you create a new game, you'll be presented with this character select screen. You'll have eight characters to choose from, and the number that you select will depend on which scenario you've chosen. For new players, I recommend the crash-landed scenario, and honestly, as an experienced player, I even prefer the crash-landed scenario as well. With that scenario, you'll choose three people. And you can randomize as many times as you want, so if you want to create that perfect starting colony, you're completely free to do that. But honestly, I find RimWorld is at its best when you give in to the chaos and see what happens. Although winning is really fun, losing can be just as much fun as well. Although I remember my first rocket launch and my first victory, I also remember that defeat where 40 Cobras broke through my granite door and poisoned and ate all of my colonists. And honestly, I wouldn't want that story to end any other way. So sometimes giving into the chaos can give you the best results in RimWorld. So don't be afraid to embrace the random eight that were given to you and make the best of a bad situation. But overall, our goal will be to create the best set of three that we possibly can from these starting options. When I'm evaluating a colonist, the first thing I'm looking at is their health. Their health includes their age. A colonist that's too old might be prone to develop even more health problems. So a character who's over, say, 70 might be someone that I'm looking down on a little bit. At 32, this character is fine. But I do see something very problematic in health, and that's a psychite addiction. Any sort of drug addiction, alcohol addiction, could be very problematic for a starting colonist. This addiction takes a long time to get over, and it'll make the colonist very weak in the meantime. When you're only starting with three, being down one of them most of the time hurts really bad. Something like a stab scar, I'm less worried about, and this one looks like a minor one. In RimWorld, all of the colonists have a health bar. If they run out of health, they die. Every limb also has a health, so you could see her left leg has 26 hit points out of a possible 30, because that stab scar is doing 4 permanent damage. That's not a big deal, but it does mean that leg is even closer to being destroyed in combat if it sustains more damage. It could be something to worry about, but like I said, this is a minor one, so if this were the only health problem, I wouldn't be too worried about it, but this psychite addiction is simply too much to overlook. So unless I'm really desperate, this is probably not a character that I would choose for my starting colony. Our second one here looks better, good age, no health conditions. So the next thing I'm interested in looking at is their skills, what they're capable of doing, or more accurately, what they're incapable of doing. If we look over here, we could see that this character is incapable of dumb labor. That means no hauling, no cleaning. That can be quite frustrating, because if you have a large amount of stuff in your colony that you need to haul, this character won't be contributing. If they have a dirty bedroom and they're complaining about it, this character won't even clean their own bedroom. So this is one of those tasks that when a character is incapable of doing, can really, really hurt. When you want hauling to be done, you want everybody to be able to contribute. The same is true of violent. Incapable of violent means they're not able to use shooting or melee skills. If they get attacked, they won't do anything about it. Just like with dumb labor, if you've got your colony under attack, you want everyone to be able to pitch into defending it, so incapable of violent can really hurt. It also means if this character is out in the wild and gets attacked by even something as minor as a squirrel, there's nothing they could do to defend themselves except hope that another colonist can get there in time. And I've had colonists sometimes go down being attacked by a squirrel because they were incapable of violent. So this combination really hurts. Being incapable of crafting and cooking, I'm actually less worried about. Cooking is one of those things that's going to be a full-time task, so I really only need one or maybe two characters who are capable of doing it. So having a character who's incapable of cooking is not really going to set me back much. Now, if two of my starting colonists are incapable of cooking, that might be a problem, just in case the first one is incapacitated, but I wouldn't be so much worried about this. Incapable of dumb labor and incapable of violent, however, that's a big red flag for me. So again, unless I'm very desperate, I will probably be passing on this character. 
Let's check this one out. The age looks good. The health, no health problems at all. Not incapable of anything. Spectacular. So we could look at what this character is actually skilled in. Now we see a huge amount of skill here in medical and not much here in cooking, but we do see this double flame as opposed to this single flame. And what that means is skills that have no flame, they will learn at a 35% rate. It means they'll get better at tasks that they're not passionate in much, much slower. Medical, because we have this one flame, he'll learn at 100%. So he'll learn much faster than someone who is not interested in this particular skill. However, cooking with the double passion means he'll learn at a 150% rate. So he'll become an even better cook much, much faster than somebody who has one and especially no flames. While characters are doing tasks that they're passionate about, they're also happier to do it. Managing mood is something you'll have to get used to in RimWorld, so having characters generally only doing tasks that they're passionate about will make that a little bit easier. This double passion in cooking is great, this single passion with a decent skill in medical is great, and also an interest in plants and animals looks really good as well. So this is a character that I can easily have be my full-time cook and not really worry about them. Ideally, you're going to want to have a character who has two or even three double passions, but beggars can't be choosers, and this character is not very bad at all when it comes to his skills. The next thing I'll look at is traits. Some traits can be good, some traits can be bad, some traits can be very bad. Sometimes bad traits will overcome good skills, but very rarely will good traits overcome bad skills. This trait here, Psychopath, you can read exactly what each trait means by mousing over them. We can see from the description of this one that it makes them have less of a mood penalty when your colony does bad things, like butchering humans or selling humans into slavery. So that could be a good thing. Gormand will mean that this character gets a little bit of a boost in their cooking skill, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm more worried about what they're passionate in. This is nice for the very beginning, but a passionate cook will very quickly overwhelm a more skilled cook. So I like this double passion. Plus four in cooking is just mediocre for me. That hunger rate multiplier is a bad thing, however. So Gormand is a bad trait for him to have, but overall, this cooking skill and this medical skill means this is a character that I'll probably end up starting my colony with. Let's take a peek at the next one. A decent age here, 28, no health conditions, that's great. Incapable of dumb labor, that's really bad, but we could take a look at the rest of the character anyway, because I see here a double passion in construction, a double passion in mining, a double passion in animals, and a double passion in social, which might overcome that incapable of dumb labor a little bit. Having a really skilled and really passionate constructor is very important. This means that we'll be able to get our initial walls up much faster. It means the quality of our initial furniture will be that much higher. And because of this passion, it means the quality will ramp up much more quickly as well. We could get ourselves to high quality beds, high quality tables, high quality chairs very, very early in the game. In addition, mining is a very, very slow skill, so having a character with a double passion in it taking care of mining is quite helpful. This double passion in social means this character might also be a good recruiter for our colony. Even though this skill is low, the skill will raise really quickly thanks to this 150% bonus in skill acquisition, so she would still make an excellent recruiter. This double passion and high skill in animals is great as well. She could be our initial pet trainer and maybe even grab some interesting animals for us early, like some muffalos or boomalopes. Ultimately, despite being incapable of dumb labor, this character has some really great skills, so she would make a really great match to our previous colonist, who's skilled in cooking. We cover quite a lot of things here. We can see some of the things that we're missing is shooting and melee skill. Neither character has much in the way of defenses. We're also missing intellectual. Um, but everything else, except for crafting, we seem to have covered pretty well, so now we know what we're looking for in some future characters. We could also look at the traits. Depressive is going to give her a permanent mood effect of minus 12, which is a very bad trait, but those skills might help to overcome it. 
We also have the trait ascetic, which means she's going to prefer to live in low quality bedrooms. That doesn't really go very well with her high skill in construction, but we can give her a bad bedroom and make her happy. This can be an easy mood boost to help offset depressive, so I'm okay with this combination. Incapable of dumb labor is not ideal, but thanks to this high construction skill, we can keep her very occupied for most of the time. One of the big things I'm worried about with characters who are incapable of dumb labor is what they're going to do when they run out of chores to do with their main task. If we have no construction to be done, no mining to be done, no one to recruit, no animals to recruit, what is this character going to be doing if they can't be hauling and cleaning? Thankfully, she's also got a single passion, inartistic, so that can easily be this character's fallback activity when there's nothing else going on. If we don't have any of these four big tasks to be done, well then artistic is a perfectly fine thing to have her fall back on. So incapable of dumb labor ends up not hurting this character as much as it might hurt another character. She's very pickable. Let's carry on. So we said we were looking for someone capable of violence, and I'm seeing immediately, despite no health conditions, I'm seeing incapable of violent, which is not a good combination for the colonists that we may have chosen already. In addition, this character is young. A teenaged character will only have a childhood backstory, not an adult backstory, which generally means that their skills will be lower as well, and we're seeing this here absolutely. Only two passions and no double passion at all. Very low skills, and we see some bad traits here. Misogynist, which means this character isn't going to get along well with other female characters, and abrasive, meaning she won't get along with anyone. Fast learner is great, but unfortunately this global learning factor increase does not offset the fact that we'll be at 35% learning rate at almost everything. So this character, not a great choice for us. Now this character, despite having a little bit of an injury here, not too bad of one though, only three points on the torso, so we're not too worried about that, does have that shooting and melee double passion and skill that we're looking for, but incapable of dumb labor, if we're going to have two starting characters incapable of dumb labor, that's very bad for us, so that's a huge strike despite this skill. Trigger happy might also be a problem if I'm looking for a good shooter. Trigger happy shooters have a lower accuracy, but can shoot much faster. That's great if they're using a gun that's already inaccurate and shoots fast, it plays to their strengths. But I'm looking for a character who can wield that starting rifle. And with trigger happy, she's just not going to be it. Additionally, two starting characters with Gormand are going to be a problem as well. That added hunger rate multiplier on two starting characters could be really problematic. So you can see how a trait that might otherwise be a little bit benign might become a problem if two of your starting colonists have that trait or have that skill and capability. So despite this skill, I don't see a whole lot else that this character is capable of doing that I don't already have covered better. And in addition, we ask ourselves the same question we asked with this character who's incapable of dumb labor. What will they do when their primary tasks have nothing to be done? And the answer is nothing, really. So this character might only be one we take if we're desperate. But thankfully, we end up with another character who's got some shooting skill. That age is getting a little bit up there, but I'm not too worried about that. We see two injuries on the torso, but it only lowers it to 35 out of 40 hit points. Something to think about, because unlike a lost leg, a lost torso will also kill the character. So not something ideal we have in a fighting character. But this passion and skill in shooting makes her a decent rifle wielder from the very beginning incapable of social, but we're always going to have our best socialite be the one doing the socializing. So just like incapable of cooking, incapable of social doesn't bother me that much if I've got somebody else who is capable of social. So I'm not worried about that. We see a single passion in mining. That's great. She could be someone who helps out with the mining. We see a single passion, but high skill in animals. We've got a double passion in high skill in animals over here, but it could be a decent backup animal handler. We see some skill in artistic, but again, we've got that a little bit better. What I'm excited about, though, is this double passion in intellectual. Despite only having one 
skill, which means that she might be very slow in researching initially. She'll also be very fast in acquiring skill and get much better research skill much, much faster. Almost assuredly, she'll reach 20 intellectual skill, which is the maximum by the end of the game. So she actually grabs some of the major things that we're missing in our group. She's got that shooting skill to help protect us. She's got that intellectual skill that we're going for. So this could be a good starting group. We'll drag them up to these starting positions here. And we can look down at team skills to get an overview of some of the skills, but truthfully, I don't use this very much. Although it lists the most important skills for a starting colony, it doesn't list all of them, and I prefer to get a broader picture of what I'm looking at. In addition, it only lists the character with the greatest amount of skill. It doesn't list the passion. So this double passion one skill is going to be the intellectual, despite this showing four no passion. So I prefer to make one last passion pass over my characters, just to make sure I've got everything covered that I want to. We've got someone who's capable of shooting, but because of our low skills in violence, this could be a colony that would be difficult to defend early on. Something to think about and something to worry about. Generally, I'd like two people who could do shooting, one person who could do melee. That would be a little bit better. But you play the cards you're dealt, right? We've got some great construction skill which I'm happy about. We've got some great mining skill and some backup mining. We've got a great full-time cook. We've got a couple of people who can handle plants. Uh, we've got some decent animal handlers as well and one very skilled animal handler. No one capable of crafting, but in general, I probably won't be doing too much crafting early. So we'll keep an eye out for recruiting somebody who's capable of crafting as soon as we can. We've got that artistic skill for the future. We've got somebody who will be a competent doctor, although picking up a second one would be helpful. And we've got a very passionate socialite and a very passionate intellectual. So those two skills will be covered as well. Overall, a very decent starting colony and one that I'd be prepared to start with. And that's all there is to it, selecting your starting colony. Best of luck to you guys. In the next video, we'll talk about a few of the things that I look for when I'm selecting my starting location and how I start planting my initial seeds for the colony. But until then, good luck in your runs, and I'll see you next time.